In this video, I want to show you, or I want to explain to you how uh, some of the vocabulary is going to appear in this section on uh, the natural base E. All right, so we have some of the definitions or the vocab that's going to appear. The primary focus is on this term, the natural base E. You're going to find that on page one of your notes. All right, um, there are some other terms that I'm going to make you familiar with, and as well as uh, review a couple things from the previous section. All right, so the natural base E is defined as an irrational number. Um, approximately equal to the number 2.718, uh, on your paper says 2.718, dot, dot, dot. That means it's going to be a continuous, irrational number. All right, now you may be wondering, like, well, what's an irrational number? Uh, well, the definition of an irrational number is, as opposed to a rational number, is a real number that can't be written as a simple fraction, Okay. Uh, one example of that would be the number pi, right? Um, you would know that roughly as 3.14159 dot, dot, dot. That means it, it just goes continuously. There is no fraction that can actually represent the number pi identically with that value. And it's the same thing with, uh, with the letter E, okay? That's what this natural base is represented by, 2.718 dot, 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 meaning continuous uh, um, values that are going to be plugged in or numbers. Um, the letter E represents that number. Okay, best way to approximate it is by this expression here. 1 plus 1 divided by x in parentheses raised to the x power. Okay, so it's, this expression is, is such that when x increases in value, it heads towards positive infinity. All right, so the bigger the value you put in here and there, the same values. Okay, it's going to get closer and closer to this to the irrational number E, okay? So you actually have a table on page one that, that shows you, you can actually test it out. You can plug in uh, bigger and bigger values of X and you will see as you plug it in, it will get closer and closer to this irrational number, all right? And so that's the natural base E. We're gonna be using that value in our uh, functions all throughout this section, okay? And so the next uh, thing I want to explain to you is what is identified as a natural base exponential function, okay? So it's gonna take a certain form, uh, and I have the equation right here, y equals a e, or a times e, <coughs> raised to the rx power, all right? Now there's two types of natural base exponential function, so again, it's still an exponential function, but it's involving the natural base using the letter e, all right? There's two types. There is an ex natural base exponential growth function, and a natural base exponential decay function. And these are the ways that we can tell which one is which. The A value in front is just some value, all right? And it's typically going to be a value greater than zero. So even a fraction, one over two, right? 0 0.5, that's greater than zero. Any value that is greater than zero will go here, all right? Now here's where we differentiate whether it's growth or decay. It has to do with the R value. If the R value that you see right there is greater than zero, Basically, if it's a positive value for the exponent, you're going to have an example of a natural base exponential growth function, okay? But if the R value is less than zero, meaning it's any negative value placed there, then it's an example of a natural base exponential decay function. So there's two examples that are actually given to you on that page. This is on page five, all right? You're given the two examples, uh, y equals e to the x, and y equals e to the negative x, all right? Now, we can, we can skip the part about a. Uh, a value, actually, the value in front is actually the number one. You just don't write it there. Um, but we're going to focus on the r values here. The value has to be in front of the x within the exponent. Now, in this case, the, the r value here would be the number one. Just because it's not written there doesn't mean there isn't a number. We just don't usually write it if we have just one as our value. And since, it's, since one is greater than zero, that's an, this is an example of a natural base exponential growth function, this one here. Since the R value in front is a negative value, it would be less than zero, negative one in this case, that's an example of a natural base exponential decay function for this one here, okay? So the main focus is gonna be whether you have a positive exponent with the X or a negative exponent with the x. That's gonna determine whether you have a growth or a decay uh, function there, all right? Uh, so the, that covers those things. Um, now, 
for compound interest we've covered this in a previous section um, so you you probably are familiar with this the compound interest formula given by this the amount is equal to the principal times in parentheses one plus the annual rate divided by the uh, the number of times the amount is compounded that's why it's called compound interest um, raised to the that same value times uh, t which is in relation to time usually years okay um, but here's a question what if it gets compounded more and more than one or two times in a year you know we've we've dealt with problems where the n value was four where it was compounded quarterly meaning applied okay or it's it's uh, the word compound means payable on both capital and the accumulated interest. Don't worry about that part uh, so much. But let's say it gets compounded uh, every month. How about every week? How about every day? How about all the time? Basically, if this value keeps growing and growing and growing and growing, it's a bigger and bigger number there and there, all right, what's going to happen? Well, if you haven't noticed by now, the, look at the form of this. I have in parentheses one plus, and then I have a fraction raised to a certain value that involves that same value in the denominator for this fraction. That actually matches a lot like this. So if it gets compounded, if the interest gets compounded continuously, we're going to be dealing with this kind of formula. And look at that. We have the letter E right here. That is to replace what we have inside this spot. Um, so the 1 plus 1, uh, sorry, r over n in parentheses raised to the n power, that is equivalent to the value e if it gets compounded continuously. All right, so 2.718 there. Um, and then we still have this r value and the t value there. Okay, so if a, a uh, compound interest formula, if it gets compounded continuously, then we can actually convert the formula there to this, where it's the amount is equal to the principal times the, the natural base, E, raised to the R times T, or the annual interest rate times the number of years. So it just depends on, the amount is going to depend on a couple of things. It's going to depend on what the principal, the initial value is of whatever we're talking about. What, what are we starting with? All right. What the annual interest rate is and how many years we're, we're dealing with, okay? So we're gonna come across some problems where we're going to try and find out how the rate is growing, um, or sorry, how, the, how much the amount is increasing, and you're gonna compare this primarily with uh, bank accounts, where if your account grows at a certain rate and your friend's account grows at a different rate, uh, or if you're given different principal amounts, which one um, you know, gets more after a certain number of years, right? You, ideally, you'd want to have more money than your friend. You wouldn't want your friend to have more money than you, all right? And so using this formula will actually help us determine who has more money. And those are the kinds of problems we're going to be dealing with. And so these are all the different types of uh, terms and equations we're going to be focusing on in this section. Again, primarily with the natural base E, all right, and how that applies to some of these uh, functions that we're going to encounter. Y equals AE to the RX and A equals PE to the RT, all right? And that's hopefully what will uh, help you get through this section. So I hope that was helpful.